doing? We are. Tell them what we're doing, Quinn. Brushing wax onto our plastic foundation. Most foundation that you buy, it's already it's already wax coated, but it's not wax, it's not coated with very much. And uh, doing some research, watching videos and things like that, I, I saw one interesting video where they did a test, and so I was doing the same thing. We put foundation in as is the way we bought it. And then we put foundation in where we add wax to this. The bees, because we got a couple hives out here. One's a Russian hive, and they just don't want to draw a comb at all. They just staying in their they're staying in their brood chamber. And I tried putting a medium underneath the brood chamber. I tried putting it on top. They just didn't want to mess with it. That's what got me into this researching, and I was just putting plain. Foundation in there, uh, wax coated foundation bought straight from the bee supply store, and we weren't messing with it. So I took some wax that we had melted and brushed it on like this, put it in there, and lo and behold, they're all over it. They're drawing comb. So I'm decided I'm going to do this whether the hive's drawing comb or not. When I'm adding these supers on, uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this on new, any new foundation. Now eventually, we want to get to foundationless frames, but I've already found out you can't do that from the get-go. Um, I've done checkerboarding where we put in foundation, foundationless, foundation, foundationless. What we found is you're going to get some pretty uneven frames that are foundationless because they've got so much space in between there they'll draw it out farther on one side and more shallow on the other it's going to be real hard to draw it's hard to take your frames in and out and it's hard to um, extract the honey so we're going to let them build out all these frames because they're going to be very even that way and once they're all built out then we're going to take out ones that are in between and add our foundationless frames so we get nice even width on both sides of them uh, as far as melting the wax, here we go, sweet pea. Isaac, I need another one, please. Um, I see a lot of people, they're, they got big pots outside. They got their, their, their burners, propane burners, which I've done that. I found the easiest way to do this is a crock pot right here. You put, that, put your wax in there, put a little bit of water in the bottom, turn it on, let it set. And then when it's ready, Brush it on. The nice thing about a crock pot, then you turn it off and it'll slowly cool down again, and then you can your wax will come right out. That's why the water's in the bottom. The other nice thing about a crock pot, when you're using a uh, whether it's an enamel pot or a stainless steel pot or aluminum pot, they're hard to get clean. Once you got, you're heating them up so because the sides cool so quick. These crock pots, this holds the heat so well. When we're actually, when I'm done, when you're letting this cool, most of the wax is going to drip down in there anyways. But if you got anything around the top or anything like that, you turn this thing on, get it hot, take a paper towel, and you wipe it, and it's clean. There's no mess. You're not scraping and scrubbing. It works really well. All right, you guys. We're almost done here. This paintbrush, I use it over and over. I don't clean it. When we're done, I put it back in its sleeve that I bought it in. The sleeve right here, you just stick it back in there. Let the wax get hard and just put it away. When, before I get ready to use it again, once my wax is melted, just put it down into your wax and let it sit there for 20 minutes. And it gets soft again. So, not wasting brushes, not worried about cleaning them. It's been working really well. Here you go. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. I'm going to get a lot on this one. Here we go. Let's see. Yep, looking good. There you go, sweet pea. Isaac, need the next one? Thank you. Almost done. There we go. 
we go. Keep your brush moving. It's nice and warm, but when you start your stroke, start on one end and just get ready to sweep it. If you don't, you're going to fill some. It's not hurting to fill them up with a little bit of wax, but I like to distribute it evenly. So you keep your brush moving. There you go. And we got one more. So when I dip my wax in, or my brush in the wax, just kind of get the excess off, just like if you were painting. And then start stroking right away. Don't sit it and then stroke. You're going to. A lot of wax, you're going to have several cells that are just filling up with it. And look at that. We're going to go put some of these on some hives here today or tomorrow. We're going to move a couple over to Dad's. We've got soybeans blooming. And I want to move them anyway, so I'm going to move them over there for a couple weeks and then move them back to their final, final destination here later on before the goldenrod starts to bloom. This is July 25th, 2020, so here about a month and a half, goldenrod. We're going to have a lot of goldenrod this year, so our field field next to us is full of it. Oh, it's Ate Nisa's birthday today. Yay, happy birthday. Happy birthday, go. Ate. Oh, that one's full, isn't it, Quinn? Now what do we do? There's one more. No, this but, is a 10 frame. Look, it won't fit. One, two, three, four. Here's five, the hives we painted yesterday. Okay, thank you for your help.